Okay, hold on. I gotta turn around. Oh, it's getting big, 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 big. That is huge. Huge. That's a wet. I got it. The tornado has touched down in the city of Joplin. I have never seen a tornado form that quickly to a mile-wide tornado. Go east right here. Go east right here. This is like the end of the world. Our house had been flattened. We did not know if our son was okay. People were being hauled away with emergency personnel holding just pieces of these people together. It was horrific. I never really thought that I would have friends that die in a tornado. Oh my goodness. Man, this is going right in the heart of Joplin, man. We are getting reports that uh, most of the rain has passed through there, but uh, they are seeing what uh, what people are considering a wall cloud, uh, 20 to 30 miles per hour. Obviously, some clouds have some uh, people concerned, mm -hmm. uh, basically between Galena and uh, Joplin. It was on a Sunday, and so I remember it was just a very hot and humid day that day, and you can kind of see a storm rolling in from the west. Kevin I was uh, actually attending my uh, son's graduation. It was uh, the high school graduation here in town. The skies were starting to become a little uh, overcast. You could see uh, some thunderstorms building off uh, to the west of the city. There's a storm you see coming across the uh, Kansas border now, just about to make it to the Joplin area. We also have some showers and storms across northern Arkansas. I was in the newsroom at 5 o'clock. We knew the tornado watches were out there. We knew the tornado warnings were out there. But it wasn't until about 0505 or when we um, started listening to the AM station in Joplin. KCRG News Time is 528. We're live storm team coverage here on the stations of Samar Radio. Again, the tornado warning in effect. For well, I was with two of my really good friends. We were just kind of driving around listening to the Cardinals and the Royals on the radio and just listening to the baseball game. The baseball game got switched over to the emergency broadcasting. I've been in a lot of thunderstorms. You, you could definitely tell that it was different. We began taking it more seriously. We wanted to find a place to just get out of the hail that they were calling for. Please do take heed. Get in your tornado shelters right now. We can't stress this enough. Take heed. This is a dangerous weather situation. Hey, where are you at? I moved from Seattle to Joplin exactly two weeks before the tornado to the day. I was at my friend's place that I was living with at the time since I just moved here. His name's Sam, and me and Sam and his uh, three-year-old son went outside. To my west, it was really, really dark, and there was lightning and thunder. It was still, I thought, a ways away at, at the time. Five miles? I'd never had, you know, seen a storm system like this. You know, you're kind of preparing yourself of what's coming next, and you really don't have a chance to prepare. Chad Elliott in the KCRG 24-Hour Storm Center. KCRG News Time is 528. Numerous calls into the station from storm spotters and listeners reporting a funnel-like cloud. Wait, wait, pull it, go up further. Get further, get further. It's going to do it, it's going to do it. Get further. Not here, up there. Straight ahead, Scott. Straight ahead. Well, I've been chasing for about 11 years now. Even before I got my driver's license, I uh, dragged my mom out to go storm chasing because I couldn't drive. There were a few other guys that were in the car. Wait, stop, 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 it's coming towards us. We started to notice a uh, rotation to our south down the road. So we went headed south towards the base of the thunderstorm. Oh wait, okay, hold on. We noticed bright flashes, and those are transformers on power lines exploding as the tornadic winds are hitting it. I see, I see, I see, I see. We're getting closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer. Power flash. We are going to Wait, get stop, 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 it's right in the field. We are going to get closer, we are going to get closer. Isaac, it's right there. I know, I know, it's right there, I know, but we can get closer. Oh my gosh, roll down your window, roll down your window. Oh. I've never seen a tornado form that quickly from a little rope tornado dancing in a field to a almost mile-wide tornado in 20 seconds. So that was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. We got RFD 
As a chase team, we make it a priority to warn the public. We got the idea to call uh, 911 in Joplin. Hi, I'm calling because I'm watching a strong, large tornado heading towards the south side of Joplin, Joplin. right now. As we came out of the graduation, I had decided that I was going to take my family home. I had my wife with me and, of course, my daughter and my son who had graduated. I just looked at my family, told them, sorry, you're going to have to go with me to work. And we turned off and, and went to the fire station. 246, just for information, we have power lines down on a car. We'd started getting reports of debris and damage, so we uh, discontinued emergency responses and had our crews take shelter until after the storm passed. 272, 223. I can't reach my wife. Can I go? So stand by on that until we can figure out what uh, we got here. The target is one, and Chief Randalls has advised that we would be waiting before we send anyone out or any of their vehicles out for search and rescue. I was working in dispatch at the police department. I was the patrol one dispatcher. I handle all radio traffic for the officers that are on the street. I'm in service. I have control of the street. Is our paging system still working? We are unsure. We're going to attempt it. We are in the basement level of the police department. We have no idea what's actually going on outside or how much damage there is or anything like that. But we know we've been hit by one, and it was obviously slow moving because we were still getting reports as it went across. One of our officers was on the east side of town, and the tornado took a southerly turn and it started heading right towards where his location was. One, two, three, three. I'm on range line now. You going to head that line? Yeah, just uh, kind of go slow and don't uh, keep an eye out because we're not sure where it's going or where it's headed. Tornado on over Barney J. Tornado over Barney J. I'm in tornado! I'm in tornado! The wind's blowing so hard his windshield wipers won't even work. His side window was broken out, so he's getting debris and rain inside the vehicle with him. Which who is that? It was Waters. Waters, I'm in the tornado. Copy. Copy. If you can, try to find the shelter or somewhere to pull it in here. Are you injured? We, of course, took radio silence for him at that point. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. You got a way out? I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. You just hope. At that point, you can't panic or do anything like that when you're in my position, at least. Officer Waters was trapped in the tornado. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. I'm going northbound, but I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, we just got that good, so we know you're okay. I think I'm north of it, but I don't know. He did finally see coverage under the bridge. I should have drove to the back. I'm good. It was me and my husband's first wedding anniversary, and we were at the Royals-Cardinals game up in Kansas City. We had just moved up here in Joplin. We called my mother-in-law to see how she was doing and our son was doing. They said there was tornado warning. I told them to just go ahead and hunker down, because we didn't know that there was necessarily a tornado. It's pretty common to be in tornado warning here in Joplin. 
This is KZRG. It's been a while since we've seen an actual tornado touchdown in Joplin, and obviously we hope the damage is minimal. As we were witnessing the tornado, we also had another part of our team uh, in a different vehicle, uh, and it was Kevin and his dad. Oh, oh God, you, okay, you go, go down the road a little bit, go down the road a little bit. We were at the northwest side of town coming in, and we could see the storm you know, coming in, and it was just black and dark and nasty, and we top a hill, and then by the time it moves over the road, it was already full-blown tornado, probably quarter, at least a quarter mile wide. It's going to cross the road. You said, oh, gosh, okay, got it. There, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There it is. There it is. This is going right in the heart of Java, man. It's going to go just a little... Oh, no, you're right, it is. All right, well, it's east of us now. I just don't know where. Knowing what the path of the tornado was, it was a pretty sure thing that it was going to go right into the heart of town. You go out and try to film this thing, and it's kind of exciting to film all of the wild nature, and then come to the realization that it's going to really do some major damage and uh, tear people's lives apart. As it came closer and closer, you could actually see the curtain of rain coming at us, and then the tornado sirens started going off. We got some. We got a tornado over here. I had never heard a tornado siren before. Where are we going? got in the closet below the stairs, and so I just kind of pointed the camera out the door. The light flickers and goes out for a second. I thought, maybe that's the worst of it. When it went out that last time, it was dark. And uh, it was a different world at that time. There's probably 18 or 19. I think at that point there were probably like 20 other people and it was dark because there was no electricity. Uh, I, uh, at least probably 10 or 12. It kind of just felt surreal. It was almost like you were living a dream. The sirens aren't going. Growing up in Joplin, you're around tornadoes or you hear of them all the time. But I never really thought that I would have been the guy that dies in a tornado or has friends that die in a tornado. Hey, where do you want me to put everybody? Joplin 2615, we have a house that has been struck. The top of the house has come down on the people. This tornado was very unusual. Number one, very wide damage path and then very slow moving. As the storm was still going through town, I actually got out in some of the hail and wind, uh, and we just couldn't make it across town because of the debris. The 911 phone did not stop ringing. You couldn't pick up the phone to try and call anybody or try to do anything without there being somebody there. At one point, it shut the system down. There's a big sense of helplessness with it. People are trapped, people are injured, people are dying, and the best you can do is say, well, we'll get somebody there as soon as we can more or less. Oh, my God. We have no house left. None, none. The whole thing's gone. Gone, I Chad Elliott in the KZRG 24-Hour Storm Center. Homes are damaged in Joplin. Uh, one guy just called up. He says his home was totaled. So I just had another caller say a couple of houses damaged over by St. John's uh, Hospital. As a parent who had two children in the high school, it, it terrifies you to think that that could have happened during a school day. I think our death toll would have probably been much higher if it had. Did 
Go ahead. Officer down. Officer down. Two forty nine and I forty four. We had a civilian actually grab his radio and yell officer down because she found the vehicle with the windows all out and the no officer nowhere around. Well, that was a civilian using our radio. A civilian using our radio. It was 357 vehicle that she was calling from. Three fourth of all, my, my house is gone. If I. Uh... Power line's down at about 24th and ship. I can't cross any further south. When I heard the officer down call, I immediately checked my radio because it was coming to see the vehicle. It was coming from Officer Waters' vehicle. When did our last contact with Officer Waters? Last there, he wasn't moving. There was that clinch and that minute of panic, um, but I checked my radio. 270 status. I'm in the ditch just north at 241 and 44. He was safe. He was under the bridge. He was actually taking care of people at that point but it's still a terrifying feeling to hear that come over the radio at you. Chad Elliott in the KCRG 24-hour storm center. Lots of reports of damage. Let me stress that. We, the phones are ringing off the hook. Yo, stop, stop, stop. Power lines down, power lines down. Go back to where you came. Go north. I want to go east. Okay. As we moved off to try to intercept the tornado, we encountered the power lines that were flashing uh, as the tornado was hitting him earlier. Uh, oh, let's, go, let's go right through downtown Joplin. We were more focused on just trying to get back to the to a main road where we wouldn't have to encounter any more debris. No, no. Okay, this is where we're at. We're getting rain. We have to hail the RT. We were encountering baseball-sized hailstones. We were actually more going into rescue mode at that point because we knew it was going right through the town of Joplin. We need to get up in the Joplin and help people out. Because that tornado formed so quickly, I don't know how much time people had. So this is really, really, really bad. Oh, that's going right to downtown Joplin. Oh. Going downtown. Huh? Look like it's coming in now. Huh? Look at the eye. There was a calming point there. We thought we were in the eye of the tornado. We went inside and there was just debris everywhere. You would see, you basically saw people's lives just all over the yard. Clothes, pictures. I remember there being a torn up Bible. Things you basically saw if you just threw 20 houses together, shook them up, and then dropped them. Oh, here we go. Nearly just 30, 40 seconds after that is when everything got real crazy. I just remember it being so, so dark real quick. I just remember the trees going back and forth. I remember the, the waves of rain. I remember debris flying by the window, hitting the window. Was. I just was like, man, I, this is this is bad. I could tell how bad this was, and we weren't even around the corner yet. Watching this on your KZRG storm tracker radar, and that is a big area of concern. Tornado warning still in effect until 6:30, and we expect this to continue now. We heard that there had been some damage in Joplin, so we went back to Joplin, going about 85 on the highway, and there was cars passing us going 100. One thing that we are seeing is uh, lots and lots of. Uh, Lots of lots of damage so far. We knew that our son, Connor, was okay. And we knew that our family members were okay, but we did not know if our house had been flattened. And that was just really scary. And uh, still waiting to get more reports coming in. In Carthage, we're getting reports of debris is falling from the sky. Well, at the, at the time of the tornado, Joplin had five fire stations. Two of those uh, um, were destroyed in the storm. So basically what that did was wipe out, you know, half of our uh, emergency response fleet. I recall thinking that if our station had been damaged, then there were going to be a lot of houses and homes that were uh, were damaged as well. You 
Mike out there. Our, our whole roof is gone. We will be out of service. We do have excessive damage to station forward. We started hearing debris hit the back of the building. My buddy was like, we need to, should we go into the beer cooler over there? Directly after he kind of you know, mentioned that, the front of the store just blew out. The store at 17 and range line has been hit. First thing I've got about possibly 30 people trapped inside the grist down here. The little kids that were in there, I remember hearing that over the older people, just because it seemed so much more genuinely scared. It kind of settled down for a second, and I think it's over. Right when that happened, then the second part of it hit. The ceiling dropped three feet. As the walls of the building got blown away, I could look out and just see the sky. When it passed, everyone was kind of just um, either it had knocked them over or like I was sitting on top of someone's legs. Is everyone okay below me? I'm right here, I'm okay. All right, I'm Are trying not okay? to lay on someone. Somebody's on my back. Everyone was just in shock because you didn't know whether or not people were hurt at that point. This is under me. This is FM 102.9, AM 1310, and we do have uh, Chad, and Chad will be joining us now. We'll check in with him. Good evening, Chad. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Uh, I am on Raceline Road. We were listening to the AM radio station in Joplin. We made a quick decision. A photographer and I hopped in the car and just headed west to Joplin. Raceline is flooding. I am plowing through the water right now. We were just preparing to, to do normal reporting, and it was just going to be a normal shift oh my uh there are people that are that have got to be injured right now josh there are probably people fatalities right now people are trapped the buildings there are buildings missing josh that used to be here they're totally gone once we came in and started seeing the destruction that's when we started to get a sense of this is bigger than what we anticipated one this is chief one i have clearing skies off to the west so uh, we uh, look to be Towards the end of this event, we do have a tremendous amount of debris out here in the two area. Looks like this is going to be very near the, uh, the path of uh, the tornado. We had literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, of 911 calls in the first 24 hours. Most of us are used to tornadoes that move through an area very quickly and then are gone. This one took 30 minutes to get across town. Normally, we can get out a lot faster and start responding. We just weren't able to with this one. We saw debris, but we saw houses and, and buildings intact.
I was thinking, okay, the tornado brushed this, you know, the north side of town or something like that. This is bad. Oh damage. my gosh. This is bad. Damage. Oh my gosh. It wasn't until we got deeper into Joplin that we started to notice some pretty heavy damage. Uh, okay, are you talking to Kevin? What, what yeah, do we want? I don't know where we I, I, I don't know. Walking around. I, I don't know. And that's when we somehow met up with Kevin and his dad. We ended up in the same place. And I said, hey, we need to start pulling people out of the rubble. Look at that. That is destroyed completely. When we first parked, we couldn't see anyone. But nobody was out walking around. Nobody was nobody was to be seen because it, I mean, it literally just happened. People were still trying to crawl out from the rubble. Oh my gosh. Well, I was definitely not mentally prepared to see what I saw, or I don't think the other guys were either. It was a uh, total devastation. some point it was like we just kind of felt like sitting ducks I said well you know we probably should move and we probably should go towards where the sun is and so we actually headed west what? oh just, i don't know missing or... got about half a block and we saw a tree down saw another tree down and I remember one house there being three or four trees falling every which way and the house was actually missed so then i remember saying oh they got it real bad in this part and then as we're driving, there's a fence line, and once we crossed that fence line, it was like a bomb went off. Oh! Oh! Ooh. You got this? The more you went west, the more it got more serious. just being calm like it was all this destruction all this chaos but it was like eerily quiet you could see you could hear the law you know like alarms going off uh, honking that was the majority of the noise at that time and then the rain it was still raining it almost looked like you hit pause this looked like the end of the world After the boys, as I call them, <laughs> fanned out to try to see who they could help in the area, uh, I'd stayed behind with the vehicles. I cannot believe this. Pull the lady out with a broken back. A gentleman approached me and said, there's a lady that's underneath her own wall. She can't get out and she's, she's really hurt. As we were talking with her, holding the wall up, uh, she said that her back was hurting her and she couldn't sit up. So we decided to get a, a door that we found in the rubble and put her on the, the door and uh, take her to a waiting pickup truck that was gonna take uh, people to the hospital. Yeah, I remember the, the man with his, with his baby son, and the baby was bleeding really bad. Uh, they they had been up. in a pickup that got hit, but he asked whether we could get him to the hospital. We said, sure. And so we headed out <laughs> to the hospital. Broadcasting live from the darkened KZRG 24-hour storm center. Power is out. We are running on backup generators at this hour. And it was like driving through a war zone, needless to say. As soon as we topped this little crest, you could see the hospital, and our hearts just sank like, oh my gosh, now what do we do? I understand clear. I got calls from the station that the hospitals were in from there. I'm trying to get to that side of town. They're just people, Josh, stunned. They're standing, sobbing on the... 
I think we lost uh, Chad Elliott. St. John's Hospital and everything in this area has sustained very heavy damage. I repeat, very heavy damage. Nope, I copy that, yeah. We topped the hill and it was like a scene from a movie. And then the hospital, on top of everything else, the hospital, the place that's supposed to heal people, had been hit. And so we're just like, what do we do now? We pull up by the hospital. And there's, they already had had triage units essentially on the grass. St. John's took a direct hit from the tornado that day. We ended up sending a uh, couple, three crews uh, to that area to help the St. John's staff evacuate the building. I uh, walked up to the main hospital, uh, found some uh, fellow security guys that uh, I was supposed to work with that night. You know, we was like, we need to get patients out of here. And uh, we started from the ninth floor and uh, worked ourselves all the way down to one. If they couldn't walk, you know, we was practically picking them up and carrying them down the stairwell. No uh, staff was lost. He was all accounted for and uh, patients. There was no patients lost in the hospital that was in-house. Uh, they was all accounted for as well. We have also heard reports that some of the debris from the hospital has reached areas like Willard. A woman was reportedly seen in x-ray, uh, x-rays in her front yard, and that just gives you a visual to how far this damage is reaching. But if you think this is bad, check out this over here. This is a neighborhood that is completely flattened by this tornado. There are dozens of people walking up and down the street trying to figure out if they're alive. It was horrific. <laughs> there was um, people yelling, looking, trying to find their loved ones. Um, the smell of natural gas was um, something that I've never smelled before in that, even in all the tornado zones that I've been in. There's a whole neighborhood that surrounds the hospital and you couldn't pick out one home. We have sustained a major direct hit here in Joplin. Now, Chad, you, you've described uh, some, some damage, and I, we're trying to understand the situation, and as we can understand it now, uh, Joplin will never be the same after this tornadic event. I was on the air when the tornado hit, and just a few blocks from our station, utter devastation. People were crying, really didn't know what to do. People were being hauled away in the back of pickup trucks with emergency personnel holding, um, holding just pieces uh, of these people together. And when I was in 24th and Main, I could look all the way to the west and all the way to the east, and I saw no structure standing and there was no end to the damage path that you could see. Dylan. Yes. Like, I don't recognize where I'm at right now. You need a ride? We're gonna see if our car is still there. Yeah. But this, this is the Walmart here? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you need a ride somewhere? Um, no. I'm just gonna see if my car, it okay, should be right okay. over here. All right, all right. Are the people still in there? Yeah, there's some um, guy, he usually is a door greeter and he's um stuck under some brick. One of the greeters was trapped in the entrance. When we actually got around to the to that side of the parking lot, I mean, you couldn't, there was no way you could go there and just start picking up huge pieces of concrete. I don't think I believe what I'm seeing right now. You wanna ride somewhere? I remember seeing just a guy walking like a zombie and his, he had blood on his arm and he was just, just not present. Yeah, I don't want, I don't, I don't know if I want to go over here. I don't know, I don't want to be, somebody can need help. Do you need help? <laughs> here, need, get in, get in. Need, do you need to get I in? I leave, Greg's gonna come get me. Okay, Greg's gonna come get you. Do you want to sit in the car? In the middle of the devastation is really where you saw um, the best of humanity come out. People, people are, people are getting help. 
There's people are helping. They're also at the parking lot. Is this for real? Y'all need a ride? Oh my goodness. When we got back in Joplin, we had to park about 11 blocks from our house. We were hearing people screaming for help, and we were basically helpless because we couldn't pull anybody out of anything. And there was this lady that came up to me, and she asked if I had seen a baby or heard a baby screaming. And she said she had lost her 13-month-old baby in the tornado, and they were looking for the baby to see if it was alive or hearing cries or anything. And we were absolutely helpless at that point. We didn't know. We didn't know what to say to her. I mean, we didn't hear anything, so. The baby did not make it, and the baby got sucked out of her arms, like she said, and they found it, um, I think, about a couple of miles east of our house. Pedestrian says that there's a house on top of a gentleman at the 1800 block of Wall. Oh my goodness. And we just had to walk with our sandals on all the way down to our house. There was nothing left of our house. And it was getting dark, so we couldn't even start to salvage anything. We were trying to see if anybody else needed help in search and rescue that night. I do not think we would be alive if we would have been in the house that evening. So I was just going through the motions at that point. I didn't know how to deal with this. I just wanted to salvage anything that I could find. Not being able to salvage anything was hard then, but those things just aren't important. That's just stuff. You can go buy anything at the store, but you you can't buy a family member. This is where we climbed out. It was still raining. People used beer boxes down here to, as steps. My buddy Corey went over, and where the wall had fallen over, there was kind of a a uh, break between the roof and the wall, and we kind of just shimmied up that wall. It's not hard to get out. Behind the gas station, it was pretty much just an open field. Our car was picked up and set down kind of where the building had been. There was a cow laying there that had been like hit by debris. All right, here's the gas station that we were at. We parked right over there. Our car got blown away, but the front door was just right there. No one was hurt in the cooler other than just minor like, bruises and cuts. That right there is where we climbed out. All the shelving was falling down. That's about where we were laying. I do feel really lucky that for whatever reason, I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose a loved one. There's a whole lot of emotions that go into it um, because there's so many other people in the community that were affected um, so much more negatively than I feel like I was. The Joplin tornado was anywhere from a half mile to three quarter mile wide at its widest point. It was on the ground for about 13 miles. Approximately 7,500 homes were damaged. We ended up with 161 people uh, that were deceased from the tornado. They were still doing a rescue operation, and they were trying to retrieve bodies. And 
we heard the search and rescue dogs barking over and over. And I heard the dogs barking in my head for weeks when I would try to sleep. My brother, there was absolutely nothing left of his house. He thankfully and his family moved in the basement. So it's just kind of crazy. I finally made it up to where my home was at. It was severely damaged. But thank God my wife and daughter were still alive. But just up the street from where we lived, a lot of people had died that day. My home was destroyed. Um, it was in the tornado path. I found out about it, I think it was on the second day, I think it was Tuesday morning. One of my firefighters who had lived down the street from me came in and um, said, hey, Chief, I'm, I'm really sorry about your home. And I, you know, I just looked at him and said, I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean? Um, you know, I figured it was still there and everything was good. And he said, uh, Chief, your home's destroyed. There's something to be said for how much progress Joplin has made since that night. The debris is mostly cleared and people are truly moving on. We have a uh, united focus on rebuilding the city and, you know, coming back better than we were before. We've learned a lot through the situation about love and kindness and just everybody coming together as a community. It's like a family. What I'm doing now is I'm finding housing for people who lost their homes and their lives in this tornado. It kind of goes full circle where I'm, where I'm still on an everyday basis, in some way or another, dealing with what happened. The number of volunteers that came to the city to help um, is just absolutely beyond description. You know, they're helping us move forward um, to, our, you know, our new lives and our new normal. They can't give us back our lives that, you know, we had on May 21st, because what we had before and what we knew before it's gone. It, uh, it doesn't exist, it, and it will never exist again, other than the memories of the citizens and uh, the people that have lived here in their lives. Uh, looks like it's now touching down. So we have an emergency situation. This tornado is now on the ground. It looks like it's a now sizable tornado. If you see anybody outside, tell them to get inside right now. It's doing major damage in Tuscaloosa. We were watching this come into a metropolitan area. Jesus, help him. It was horrendous. Oh, no. Wow. All I could think about was, is this thing coming for me? This thing is huge. It was utterly terrifying. Coming out of the campus buildings. You could feel the power of this monster. Go the f back. I'm not kidding. It was right on top of us. That's the tornado right there. It looked like it had a mind, that it had personality. It was the scariest moment of my life. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my had severe weather that morning between 3.30 and 9 o'clock. And during that time, five people were killed and a quarter million people had no power. National Weather Service notified me that Tuscaloosa had a 40% plus chance of being hit by a tornado. It's important that we take heed of this and hopefully Tuscaloosa will come out unscathed, but it doesn't hurt for us to be prepared and ready for what lies ahead in the next few hours. At that point, I decided to go ahead and activate the city's incident command system, which is basically our emergency protocols. I love working in the emergency department because you have the opportunity to take care of people. It was a typical day in the emergency department, typical patients that we get every day. One of the paramedics mentioned that bad weather was coming in. One of the nurses and I walked outside, and it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. The problem we were facing was the fact that the sun popped out. 
And then you had a lot of people saying, well, everything's going to be okay. This is the kind of stuff where we really, really ask you to pay attention. The fact that the sun is out is the worst possible thing because that makes the air more buoyant and unstable. The uh, temperatures continue to warm. Uh, the uh, instability increases, and again, a lot of the severe weather parameters are just off the charts today. Looking at the data, we have a checklist of about 64 parameters that you need for a tornado. We had about 60 of the 64, they were just screaming, almost an extreme range. That any of these storms could erupt and go severe in a heartbeat. And All of a sudden, the atmosphere just started changing, the wind picked up, got dark. We knew we had something big coming. That particular day, we weren't doing anything special. Uh, we'd actually had a couple of days of thunderstorms, and a very good friend of mine, Josh, uh, had been shooting. He was just playing around with a new video camera that I'd gotten not too long ago and was just trying to catch lightning. We had seen some of the stuff on the news about, you know, potential tornadoes, but that's kind of something that we get almost every single day uh, during the summer. So it wasn't really something that we really fretted too much about. I went to go out to uh, the front yard and I looked towards the front of my house where I saw my friend and he was like, look right over there. Holy You could just see movement and velocity. We knew that there was something going on around us that wasn't normal. We want you to be in a safe place right now. All of these storms are extremely dangerous today. I think some of the real heroes were our people in the field. If we just showed radar, for a lot of people, it looks like a bucket of spill paint. But you show a live stream, I will tell you, people will do something. Let's look at the live stream. We've got uh, John Brown and Mike Wilhelm, two of our better sky watchers. I work for the state of Alabama, Department of Human Resources. I've stayed in touch with weather and studied it a lot for probably about 25 years. Oh, yeah, look at that thing. I see a little finger. Whoa, thunderplane. I work with sky watchers for ABC 3340, and we were quite confident that there was a storm that was making aim on Tuscaloosa. It's rotating, for sure. That is lowering. I see a few little fingers there. And that particular day, every storm was isolated and it was uh, maintaining strength and it was rotating. It's starting to come into view. It's coming down to a point. It's right there in front of us, right in front. We were looking at the storm and John says, Mike, a lot of people are gonna die today and they just don't know it yet. I am a student at the University of Alabama studying journalism. For about six years, I've been working at a local TV station in Tuscaloosa. It was while I was in one of my classes that we started getting word that the weather was um, going to be a little rougher than we thought, and so my professor asked if the station needed me. And at that point, I was able to go to the station, and that's when things really started to um, progress. West Alabama is bracing for more stormy weather. And the same system has already been blamed for several deaths and destroying many businesses and homes all across the South. For the latest I'm the news director and anchor at WVUA TV. Being the news person, people are asking you, Lynn, is this going to be as bad as people say it is? And you really don't have any answers. It's really not in your hands. At the same time, you're having to think about your own personal safety this potentially could hit the building where we are right now. So again, get in the lowest floor of your home, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We had converged in the studio to watch the tower camera, and we saw the tornado come down, take shape, and it became fairly large. Don't take a chance with us saying this is obviously a very dangerous situation what we're looking at. But then in just a few moments, we saw it lift back up, and it goes back up into the clouds. And yeah, it looks like it's lifting. You could feel that collective sigh of relief. It appears that it's not on the ground at this second, but... And I said, it's going to get angry and come back down even worse. And in just a couple minutes, it did exactly that. Uh, looks like it's now touching down. 
This is the west of Tuscaloosa. Yeah, we're seeing power flashes. So we have an emergency situation. This tornado is now on the ground. It looks like it's a now sizable tornado we're watching live. This is coming right towards Tuscaloosa. Calling a tornado emergency for uh, Tuscaloosa in Northport. And again, uh, oh, this is wow. a very serious situation. Uh, so if you are watching us and I've lived in Tuscaloosa pretty much my entire life. Um, I was out of school working for my dad at the time. I had one of my friends, uh, Nate Hewitt, with me. Oh my God, look at that fire. And again, it looks like that is raging. That, yeah. The storm was pretty bad, and so we had actually left work a little bit early. How is this chase go away? Personally driving, I couldn't see the storm that well. However, after the trees move, it becomes apparent that the storm is coming directly at us. Holy There it freaking is. That thing is massive. We need to get, we need to go faster. It's coming right at us. No, keep straight, keep straight. Never in my life will I see this again. Where we were sitting on the interstate, having no idea where the storm's actually going. I didn't really realize the severity of the situation. You can see debris in the air. That thing is half a mile wide. Once I actually looked over, I didn't realize that we were nearly as close as we were when it was right on top of us. We need to, we need to go that way. We're fine. Go the f back. I'm not kidding. like we were too close and that's when we probably went about half a mile in reverse down the wrong way on the interstate to get us far enough away from the storm. It's, it's crossing the interstate right where we were. Oh my God. It became apparent as to exactly how much damage was being done. You can see huge debris. You can actually see what appears to be full-length two-by-fours. I mean, just everything and anything had been sucked up and was spiraling around a half-mile circle. Oh, my God. That thing is destroying everything. we've had. Uh, this thing is clearly a large, violent tornado that is down on the ground. I tried to indicate that this is a genuine, genuine emergency. This is not a false alarm. This is an extremely violent situation. Notice the power flashes. It's very hard to stay composed on the air because you know that if Many people don't do anything in the path of that. There's a good chance they're going to lose their life. I want everybody in the city limits of Tuscaloosa to stay sheltered. I have a wife and two children, but you cannot be fatigued. You cannot be distracted. You cannot be emotional. Nobody should be on campus walking. Nobody should be driving. Oh, no. This was different on a lot of levels. You don't normally see a very clearly defined funnel like you did with that tornado. Had multiple vortices, meaning there was a lot of small funnel-like shapes that circulated around the outside of the tornado itself. Debris everywhere. Now it's doing major damage in Tuscaloosa. As we were standing there, we were watching this come into a metropolitan area. Not good, Mike. No, it's going to destroy a big chunk of Tuscaloosa. Jesus, help him. Help him be in safety, please. It was just obvious it was a horrendous situation.
I am an on-air personality program director for a radio station. All of a sudden, they started blaring the sirens. Oh my god. The tornado was right in front of the radio station. out at this cloud of black dust that just goes all the way up to the heavens. This thing is huge! It was breathtaking. This is a very large tornado coming directly our way. This includes the University of Alabama campus. If you see anybody outside, tell them to get inside right now. The majority of people who were gathered in that studio, Tuscaloosa is home for them. This is coming right towards our television station. You could feel the power of the fear just radiating from people. You want to get everybody out of the hallway and into our studio if that is a possibility because uh, this is definitely a life-threatening situation. We just all huddled underneath our news desk and it was people that were working at the station as well as people that were just grabbed from outside in the hallway and told to come in. It was really utterly terrifying. Clouds moving like mad over there. We both begin to see kind of a torrential a movement of clouds, but it was so close to the ground. I mean, it looked like it was right behind another house. What is that flying in the air? There's debris. There's over debris there. flying in the air, dude. Right over there. Dude, that's getting loud. The rumbling of the ground and the pressure change and the sound growing louder and louder and louder came towards us. We were scared to the point of going inside. Oh my God, here, give me that. Oh, dude, you look, see all the debris up yeah. there flying? Oh, dude, that looks wild. Oh, it's right there. That's that tornado right there. Yeah, let's get downstairs. As I turn around away from the door, I see my tree disappear. And I said, all right, it's time for us to go downstairs and get to a safe place. I uh, grabbed all the couch cushions off of the couch and threw them down there. And then just kind of laid on top of those couch cushions and put them behind me and laid on top of my friend. and then just kind of laid on top of those couch cushions and put them behind me and laid on top of my friend. in the roof. Above my room and our old computer room, the entire roof was ripped off. There was nothing left. Oh, we on the street. Oh, my God, we on the street. Dude, our porch is gone. Oh, my God. It was probably about five trees laying on top of the walkway to the house. And in that situation, it was when I was positive that we were in danger. We're going to have to get right, out of here, dude. Go. This house could collapse. This thing looks like it might be over one half mile wide, uh, maybe up to three quarters of a mile wide. Now, Isaiah Harper, uh, you're, you're seeing a tornado right now. Tell us what you've got. It was monstrous. It was just huge. 
And it looked like, from sitting still at one point, that it had a mind, that it had personality. I'm watching people die. And at the same time, my wife was on the east end of Tuscaloosa, and my kid's at home, and I'm wondering which way is this thing going to go. Either I'm about to die or my family is about to die. So it was the most scariest moment of my life. I mean, I saw my life sort of flash between my eyes. Holy crap, guys. Oh, my gosh. Wow. While I was filming the whole thing, all I could think about was, is this thing coming for me? Oh my god! It looked like it was kind of making a turn for our direction. Totally Everybody get inside. So we got back inside. And then the station went dark. Oh my gosh. And all we were left with was a giant black cloud that was staring at us. Oh, my God. The last time we had one this big was probably March 21st, 1932, even before my time. Uh, that destroyed so much of uh, Tuscaloosa. We were huddled in this room, and we were surrounded this little television. This is where I've grown up. This is where I have raised a family. And now we were watching on, on live television the tornado rip through the heart of the city. And that was the first moment for me where you get that weak in the knees moment. It was traumatic. Uh, right down Skyland Boulevard here and uh, Interstate 5920. The quietness in the room was amazing. And then the TV went blank. I believe the tornado at that point was about halfway through our city. All right, this is a life-threatening situation. We have a very large tornado coming right into the center part of Tuscaloosa. This includes our television station. In that moment, you really don't know exactly what you're going to do. At some point, I started to pray. This thing's coming right towards the University of Alabama campus. We're going to stay on air as long as we possibly can. Uh, we're getting power glitches. A very large tornado on the ground right now. Very... Then, boom. Just completely gone. Everything went black. So I grabbed my camera, and I just started running up flights of stairs in the building. And as soon as I got out of the stairwell, there it was. And all you can do is just look. It's such an overpowering feeling to be eyeball to eyeball with a killer like that. I'm seeing the rotation, I'm seeing the debris. It's coming out of the campus buildings. the rotation, I'm seeing debris. It's such an overpowering feeling to be eyeball to eyeball with a killer like that. Oh my it's coming over the campus buildings. You could feel the power of this monster. And when it came dangerously close, I ducked back into the stairwell and just started to pray. Are you kidding me? Nobody should be out there. You had two really important facilities close to the tornado path. One was DCH Regional Medical Center. That would be the ultimate disaster if a tornado took out that hospital.
our nurse manager stuck her head in the door and said for us to take cover because the news had reported that there had been a tornado spotted it on 15th Street coming straight for the hospital. We have this child who is intubated, so we quickly decided that the other nurse would lie over her head and that I would lie over her body on the stretcher and hang on. At this point, we're unaware of how big this tornado was. And then all of a sudden, there was this huge black cloud just swirling, and I screamed, oh my gosh, there it is. It came so quickly, and it was just so huge, and it was so close. It was almost like you could reach out and just touch it. It was there, and then it was gone. And the sky was clear again. It looks like the tornado is beyond the range of the Tuscaloosa sky cam, so it's moving away from the city. But again, I would say for about the next maybe 15 minutes, I would stay sheltered until we can come out and assess the damage. Oh my God, oh my God. Look at that damage. Look at that right underneath the oh, look, at this. look over there. Probably the biggest obstacle was all the debris. There were whole trees down the road and two by fours and signs. At that point, I think everything kind of became surreal. I can't even recognize this place. And I've driven up and down this. We can't get there. The area we pulled up to, it was about a block and a half away from where I work and had been just a couple hours before. And it looked like an absolute war zone. There was nothing left except for a few power poles that were broken off. Um, houses were completely laid out over 30 or 40 feet, but there was nothing truly left of them. Get in, get in. Come on. Oh, my God. Are you okay? Hey, are people okay? I don't know. I can't. I can't. Can I use your phone? Yeah. My phone. Oh my God! It just went right through. What, what, what number you need? It just went right through the city. No, 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 Oh my God! Oh my God! As we were in the vehicle, I was getting updates about two communication towers being destroyed. About 80% of the city's heavy equipment was destroyed. 911 being gone and a fire station being destroyed. You would have entire houses that were blown off the foundation. You could see trees stripped of their bark. Most of the trees, in many cases, were just completely uprooted and tossed somewhere else. Cars tossed around like toys, crumpled up into balls like a piece of paper. A lot of people described it like a bomb went off, only over a long, swath. Trees are blocking roads. There's no information. Cell service is dismantled to see what that beast did to this city was unbelievable. I saw people just emerging, people with cuts, bleeding, impaled objects. They looked to me almost like zombies. I kind of describe it as an unraveling nightmare because we saw the landscape totally changed. It was unrecognizable. I was never really concerned about where I lived because I hadn't heard anything about Alberta or my apartment. Isaiah, tell us where you are and what you got. James, I'm on 13th Street. I'm standing right here in the parking lot. Those 
businesses are no more. They have been completely leveled. It's a complete disaster here, James. There was a Shell gas station uh, on the corner of 13th and McFarland. And everything inside of that gas station had been gutted by the storm, um, except for the counter. And I remember walking up to a lady. She was still holding on to the counter, and she was crying. She says, I wrote this storm holding on to this counter. And I'm not letting this go until somebody tells me for sure that thing is gone. And I said, ma'am, the, the storm's moved on. And during that interview, she let go. I'm just hoping the neighbors are all right, man. I know they had all those kids over there. You're worried about some of the things that you have, but then that very quickly dissipates and you get to being where you need to go and check on everyone else around you. Come on, come on. Hey, how are y'all? Yeah, we're good. Tuscaloosa is not a very big town, and we all kind of know each other a little bit around here, especially our neighbors. Y'all OK? Hey, I, I need to get over here. We need to go check on these folks. Josh, look out, power line. It's a sketchy situation when you're dealing with high electricity in a disaster area. Dude, these lines, they're down now, but they might come back up. That's what I'm saying. But we got to get over here. We have to go check on these people. Hey, are y'all OK? There's trees all up and down here, so I don't know. The neighbors to my left, they had a couple of trees leaned over on the side of their house. And, you know, I was worried. I heard little babies. Yeah, there should be people on the way. Children were crying. It was a very stressful situation. You all right? The neighbors to my left, the daughter had fallen down the stairs. That was just absolutely heartbreaking. Hey, is, it, is it over? The storm? Yeah, the storm's over here. One sec. Go ahead. How are you guys doing? The storm's gone. So it's all right. Hey, you guys want to come up here? The, um, the two other ones were way downstairs when the doors flung up and everything was flying around. I was trying to get yeah. down. And... That's pretty exciting, huh? It was kind of a wild situation. You know, there was no power. Children were crying. You just try to do things as calm and take everything one step at a time. I remember the first one when we got to was an elderly lady, and the exterior bathroom wall had fallen over and just basically encased her in the bathtub. We went and just pushed the wall up and helped her up. And then me and Nate saw a uh, little girl standing on a pile of rubble that used to be her house, and she was just standing there crying for her mom and her sister. We heard the sister first, found her after a few minutes of digging, and we could hear the mom calling. We wound up having to tear a, a door off of some of the debris and used it as a backboard, carried the mom out to uh, an ambulance that was there. The first three patients that came to the hospital came by ambulance, and we never saw them on the trauma hall because they perished before they actually got into the hospital. It was very difficult because they're children. Patients came so quickly, and they just continued to come. It's like there was no end. Before you knew it, the whole emergency department was completely filled. People sitting in the floors, on countertops. Rooms that were made for a patient would have four and five patients. The hard part is you would have mamas and daddies coming in looking for their children. So you had to tell them, I don't know where your child is. And so you have these panicked parents begging you to tell them that their children are OK. And you can't. Oh, 
He's terrified. I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't have some of the basic utilities that we needed to get by. Um, makes an uncomfortable situation, and the only answer is to try to keep your calm. He's okay. I just grabbed him as quick as I could. I yeah, that's cool. He's not bleeding or anything. He seems alright. Okay, calm down, but we got her out, okay? She may have a concussion, but we got her out. Now, I spent about an hour or two getting them set up in an uncomfortable position and waiting for the ambulance to show up. Unfortunately, that little girl who had fallen down the stairs ended up developing some bad pneumonia from that night and passed away. There's been a massive destruction here in the Tuscaloosa area and all the way we've seen uh, scores of buildings that have been leveled. So I think it really hit me the next morning that the night video you just don't know, but that first light of day chopper video was just horrifying. It looked like it intensified just as it came into Tuscaloosa. Didn't recognize anything. It could have been any place in the world. I wouldn't know what that was. Even though I've been doing this for 36 years and I've worked through many tornado outbreaks, this was the big one for me. This is certainly one of the worst tornadoes that I've ever seen. van on the side of its The fact that we woke up to sunny weather was just very odd because we had just been through such a monster of a storm. It's a fire station. We immediately started seeing damage and one of the first real places that we saw was um, a fire station. Oh, this used to be the church. I looked up and I saw just this gaping hole inside this church. Oh, and every day they had this sign that was like inspirational. There was a chandelier that was still there. It was just this sad little church that used to be so grand and beautiful and it was just crumbling. That was a scene that I will never forget. You would hear someone screaming a name and just looking to see if they could find their loved one. There was one gentleman who just instantly fell to his knees and just started to pray. It turned out later that he was supposed to be inside that building. That building was a restaurant, and it just so happened it was his day off. I did see some people who were pulled out that didn't make it, and there were also some people that we felt like we could hear calling for help, and we'd dig down, and we can't find them. There was this young college boy who came in, and he had some really significant chest trauma and head trauma. He reminded me of my son, and I felt like I wanted to be the one to take care of him. All I could think of was, here is this young man who did absolutely nothing wrong, but he's going to die. And I knew he was going to die. And it just broke my heart. number of uh, college students from the University of Alabama live down there. I actually talked with one. She told me that she was in her bathroom when that tornado came through. She says only the bathroom was left standing in their house and thankfully... They As we were out there, there was a woman who said the storm blew her newborn baby out of her arms. Somebody heard a cry in the rubble and she was determined that was her baby. We were all out there. We were digging and moving the bricks with her. But then our hearts dropped when we got to the source of a cry, and it was some kid's doll that had a crying mechanism in it. I don't believe to this day they ever found that child. We're in bad shape at 6th Avenue East and 15th Street. The energy level uh, seems to be pretty low today. Uh, you can tell fatigue is starting to set in with some of these people who have lost everything. Uh, a few people. Now we're doing stories about people who are still missing. And I did the story of little Michaela Edwards. She was a sweet, precious little four year old girl. And she's with some of her family huddled, trying to hold on to some plumbing 
to protect themselves from the storm. Edward says the rest of his family survived by hovering in a bathtub. And all of a sudden, two of her family members are okay, but they can't find little Michaela. Family and friends searched this area around the clock. We went to the VA hospital and where they was, you know, bringing bodies in from the tragedy that happened. And she was there. She was there and, and she was gone. Having to report that after holding out some hope that she may be found alive, I was really sad. I wonder how far we're gonna have to walk in order to get to an area where uh, cars can actually travel. I don't know, what in the hell. We had no idea of knowing how bad the damage was. We just knew that we had gotten hit in our area. We ran out of supplies and we decided to go up to University Boulevard and there weren't houses anymore. Everything was gone. That was the biggest shock. We didn't get hit directly, anywhere near as hard as I thought that we did. Oh, man. Oh, my God. This was the office. Uh, as we had gotten closer and closer to my apartment, we saw a building standing there. Oh, my God. I just kept thinking, I am so lucky. I'm going to be able to get my things. I mean, we were celebrating. Oh. No, that's the bottom. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh my we were not actually seeing my apartment. What we were seeing was my downstairs neighbor's apartment. And I was on the top floor, and the top floor was completely gone. It was just from on top of the world to it's worse than I ever thought. Oh. I don't know what to do. For a while, I kind of bumbled around in the debris. Some kitchen. Stuff was just everywhere. Clothes. It was just devastating. I kept looking through the rubble. Oh my gosh, my grandma's pearls. <gasps> Oh, my God. And at one point, we find my grandma's pearls that she had gotten me. Wow. They're perfect. Is all your jewelry in there? Not all of it, but there's some. And so that was a moment that gave me a lot of hope, like I could move on from this because I was getting little pieces of my life back. The tornado was down for about 80 miles. It's approximately at the widest point, one mile. The maximum wind velocity was about 180 to 190 miles an hour. The death toll in my state that day was over 250, and that is absolutely inexcusable. I've got to take the energy I have and work on preventing this from happening again. You can be a part of a process that can deliver information that's potentially life-saving, but we had one of the highest death counts ever. So it was one of those days that I don't think I'll ever totally forget. I worked as hard as I could work. I still had patients die. You feel like I didn't do enough. I could have done something else. And that's tough. The president and first lady offered hugs and handshakes to members of a community that has suffered the ultimate loss. I've got to say, I've never seen devastation like this. Uh, it is heartbreaking. I remember he would keep saying, Walt, I've never seen destruction like this. But I said, you know, Mr. President, you've never seen people fight back like this. Here in Tuscaloosa, it was the people that came to the rescue. And it made me so proud to say that Tuscaloosa is my home. I was blessed that no one in my family was harmed. I realized that life is so precious. It really changed my outlook on life. Since the tornado, I have become a firefighter. Being able to give back to my community in the weeks after the storm gave me a direction for what I wanted to do for my life. When all the comforts of normal life are stripped away, you will see a beauty in people like you've never seen before. You'll see that person who has almost nothing 
give everything they have to help someone else. And no matter how bleak the situation may be, there's always hope. Jenna, go get in the cellar. Go get in the cellar. It's an F5. I know it's, it's huge. Okay, all right, bye. I don't think she actually knew the magnitude of it. This thing is sucking in everything. Oh my God, I hope it don't go towards our house, man. I don't know what to say. You feel so powerless. It's going through my town, man. And uh, it's gonna hurt some people. It's gonna hurt some people bad. I was praying that it wasn't gonna go north. If it went north just a half a mile, it could have hit my home. I knew this was a killer tornado and I knew someone was gonna die. This is now going to be, it looks like, crossing I-44. This is going to be just north of Newcastle. More than likely, it's going to stay going east here, so this is going to cross over the Canadian River. After we close up the shop, I just had this really weird feeling. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go pick Benji up. I just started heading to Moore, kind of went to the back roads because the highways were backed up. And I just remember the people stopping. And I was thinking to myself that, why are you stopping? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And that was when I saw the tornado come down the first time. And my wife was texting me back, are you on your way to pick up Benji? I said, yes. I said, stay where you are. I'm going to pick him up. As soon as the tornado was coming into Moore, immediately I started thinking about my children because my children are in school that day. But I can see that it just crossed over I-44. That's about 10 minutes away from me. And so I needed to go ahead and get into my shelter. There are ventilation pipes kind of stick up out of the shelter. And when the wind started picking up, it had taken the wind cap that keeps out dirt and moisture completely off. And that was when I was able to see outside. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is the tornado that's about to pass through. I can hear it coming. I'm so scared right now. My shelter is old. It's real creepy. It's dark. And I was frightened to death, and it, it, it was pretty traumatic. I just, I'm, I'm lost right now. I'm so worried for my boys. I thought the world was going to end, honestly. I mean, the shelter could fail, and I didn't know. My worst fear was ultimately dying. Two six nine headquarters. It's going to be approaching Fourth Street in Oklahoma City, a little bit west of Santa Fe. Officers started kind of spanning out around the city, uh, trying to stay out of its way and trying to let each other know where it's at. 272, we got some rotation above our heads to the right. The problem with this storm is it was so large that it was kind of confusing at times. It was two miles long, so, you know, officers thought that it was at one place when it was actually covering, you know, a good two miles of our city. A violent tornado going through south Oklahoma City metro. It is in central Moore. Go, John Welsh. This thing is a monster. It's so big, it's completely lost its texture, and uh, this thing is just grinding right through Moore. As soon as the tornado crosses I-44, which is a major thoroughfare through the city, that's where the heavily populated areas start, the neighborhoods. And when it hit that, it started picking up all the debris, and it almost lost shape because it got so big. And uh, this thing is just tracking, like you said, continuing to go towards uh, the Moore Warren Theater area. Our main purpose is to give people that forewarned shot of exactly where the storm is, what preparation they need to take, and if they're in the clear or if they're not. We kind of take off the TV shirt. We kind of put on the life-saving shirt. So this is definitely something that uh, you need to be aware of and uh, get in your tornado shelter area right now.
If you are living in more, this is going to be moving in your direction. You need to be below ground immediately. Now is the time to go into your tornado shelter. We are not because of Chance's stream that was coming in. We started to see this this tornado going into a more densely populated section of Moore. Chance Cold Iron, go ahead and go. Okay, Damon, uh, uh, tornado is on 149th, just cross 10. It's a large stove pipe tornado. Um, it's in the EF4 category or higher. I was playing two roles that day, chief meteorologist and husband. This is the tornado now that's going to be right uh, over and it's just cropped on the train track. And I'm looking at the path of this tornado and it is headed right into the middle of my neighborhood. I'm uh, very familiar with Moore. It is my home. It is what I've called home for the last four years. I was texting my wife saying, get into the tornado shelter. But the seconds felt like hours as I was waiting to hear back from my wife. Damon, there's a big neighborhood edition of nice homes here. It's getting ready to take it direct hit. I also knew at the same time I had a job and that I couldn't let my guard down. And again, uh, just for anyone that is curious, I mean, I live right here. So uh, you can certainly uh, imagine the emotions that I'm running through right now, but a life-threatening situation. You need to be below ground immediately. Stay tuned for your Local on the Eight, brought to you by Theraflu, the power to feel better. It's sunny out here, but it is cold. That's a wrap, guys. <laughs> when your cold is holding you back, you need the power of Theraflu. Now in caplet form, it's the only cold and flu caplet that has a maximum strength formula with a unique warming sensation that you can instantly feel. People count on the Weather Channel. Right. As it was moving through my neighborhood, we were still sampling winds in the 200 mile per hour range. I'd had a lot of emotions running through. Damon, that tornado moved just to the south of 4th Street. I lost my house. I'm pretty sure maybe yours is gone. It's gone. As I'm chasing, I'm reporting. I'm going through my head. Where's my sister at? Where's my other sister at? Where's my wife at? Who do I know in the path of this tornado? That's my town. All these people are losing their houses. I'm part of that. That's kind of why I reported it uh, on the air like that to Damon. Those are things that you're never prepared to hear. But if we were to lose our house, so be it. Knowing that my family was going to be OK in the shelter, that was what allowed me to get through that afternoon. This is unreal. Power lines everywhere. It's dangerous, very dangerous for me to be here. I'm telling you, it's a deadly, I mean, it's incredible. It was hard to believe how lonely it felt being behind that thing. So it was kind of nice to be able to talk to Jenna on the other end of it. It's taking a line straight east along 134th. This huge tornado is coming through our town, and I'm sitting in a cellar with people I don't really know that much. So the time I did spend on the phone with my dad was very special. This thing is sucking in everything. Oh my God, I hope it don't go towards our house. I could hear the wind behind him on the phone. I could hear how crazy everything was, and I was really scared. I gotta stop. The trees are down, I can't get through. Jenna, I can't tell you, I can't stress to you enough. Stay in the cellar, all right? It was amazing that I was keeping communication with her, with an F5 tornado between me and her. Hey, are you okay? But, you know, even though she's in a storm cellar, I thought the thing was going to go right over the top of her. I really did. I was really, really starting to think that I didn't have a home to go to. I'm trying to get back. OK, so be ready. Be ready. I cried, especially when he told me, you know, get ready. It's coming. It's going to hit our house. Just be prepared. I'm thinking, dang, I'm about to lose everything. It's coming right towards our neighborhood, Jen. There's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. We're helpless. The tornado's gotten very well defined now. It has really intensified. You need to be taking your sheltering activities. It will probably be there within minutes, so a dangerous situation. No, we still got time, Joe. We still got time. Hold on. Hold, stay with it. Wow. Roar. 
Huge debris, huge debris. You could feel the actual roar of the tornado. It was just a beast. It was massive with huge pieces of debris being lofted hundreds of feet in the air, pieces of homes, cars, just all thrown in the air. We could tell at this point that this tornado was a monster. We did see people who got out of their cars who were looking right at the tornado as it was coming toward them. I hope those people made it out okay. Go! Go! Good God, these people... Go! People are about to get... We got a straight road east. This takes us all the way east, so we're good. Once we saw it get closer toward us, we didn't want to mess with this thing. Your natural instinct is to just get out of there. It was just something out of the movies, completely unimaginable. And at that point, you really couldn't believe what was happening uh, to the town of Moore. I ran from my van into the office. I was asking, where's Benji at? She said, they're back in the in the restroom. I really do We're miss my mom. with everybody. By the time I got into the bathroom, the power was out. And I just remember having to tell him that we can't leave. I have to stay here because it's, it's right behind us. Mom's asking if I'm with you. Uh. He wanted to talk to his mom. So I was taking these video clips and I was sending them to her. I told him, hey, the boys, if I go, you stay, you stay, hold on. If you don't hear me, don't don't start crying, you know, just hold on. Just uh, listen to my voice and just hold on. Enter the world of Di Serono. Di Serono, the world's favorite Italian liqueur. Cologuard, colon cancer screening for people 50 and older at average risk. I'm here for an important reason, colon cancer screening. There's a bunch of places where screening wouldn't be easy. It was dark. The girls kind of crammed in. A lot of the girls were crying and borderline hysterical. When the tornado hit, I thought, I have no control here. I'm about to die. There are kids here that could be killed. I just knew we needed to hang on. I was holding on for dear life at that moment. I let out that scream and then I realized they need me to assure them that we're fine. I had told the boys, grab onto me somewhere. You can't reach onto me. I said, grab one and hold on to the bottom of this toilet. I said, don't let go. I held my arms like a football stance over that toilet. And I knew that I had to keep these kids safe. One of the boys said, can you feel the breeze? I said, guys, keep your heads down. That's not the breeze, that's, that's the roof, it's about to go. At that moment, instantaneously, that roof was just gone. A cinder block wall that had fallen onto my back, pinning my leg. This debris just started building up. I literally thought I was gonna be crushed. I was scared, I was really scared. I wasn't gonna come out at all. There's damage to the roof, it's okay. We're in a brick building, it's okay. After the tornado had gone over the top of us, I could see the kids were safe. So I opened the door and I could not believe what I was seeing. Oh my God, oh my God.
I'm gonna say sick to my stomach. Oh my god. I don't have my boys with me. I am all alone down here in my shelter. Just so scary, guys. All I can hope is that it just that it's not that bad. There it is. You can kind of see it on the ground, just the texture of it. We followed the tornado from start to finish, and the total duration was probably, rough estimate, 20 miles on the ground. It's really fizzling out, as we're seeing. I'm going to do another turn here. I'm getting kind of far away. But uh, it looks like it's roping out a little bit, and there it is. It's gone, Mike. After the tornado lifted and it hits you, your home, your town has been completely destroyed by... Uh, an act of nature. Our response time to get to the area that was hit was within minutes. But to start the search and rescue and control the scene was very difficult to do because we had to cross the path that the tornado come through. It takes you a second to just kind of grasp what has happened, but immediately you hear people screaming for help. And there were a lot of people st stuck in shelters or stuck under debris. I'm heading to the east, and all I was thinking about is, I've got to get home. I've got to get to my neighborhood. I've got to see Jenna. When my dad said I was safe and I could come out of the cellar, I really didn't know what I was in for coming out and seeing everything. I'm crossing the path right now. I'm starting to see a lot of damage. I'm starting to see debris all over the roads. It's really starting to become real. Oh my God. Huge, huge amounts of damage. I just drove by a, a concrete slab and I didn't even realize that the concrete slab was a 7-Eleven. I heard later on that the husband, wife, and an infant baby uh, that died in that store. And you know, that, that, that was, uh, it was devastating. Flattened. We kind of looped back around to the west. We knew that we were going to be some of the first people uh, to arrive. Jeez, this is the worst I've ever seen. Good. Look at that car, Mike. This was incredible damage. Just absolute destruction of whole neighborhoods. This is unbelievably sad. Oh my God. Let's just stop. What was once a nice neighborhood of homes, nice homes with families living in them, was reduced to just piles and piles of just unrecognizable rubble. People were kind of in disbelief, kind of in shock, just because I don't think it really hit them yet what, what had just happened. People were just climbing out of their storm shelters. A mom and a daughter were climbing out, and there were just tears pouring down that mom's face. She was heartbroken because as the tornado was coming through, someone was pounding on her shelter to get in, and she didn't have the strength to open the door. And to this day, we have no idea what happened to that family trying to get in their shelter. Have you heard any reports of what may be going on at Briarwood? I'm hearing from some homeowners here. They say that school has been hit worse than this, but we don't know as far as casualties in that school. When the first responders were there, we focused the majority of our efforts on the two elementary schools that were hit, Plaza Towers as well as Briarwood. We focused more initially on Briarwood just because of the damage that was done. 
And as we got closer into a neighborhood there next to the Briarwood Elementary, we were seeing the parents who were going back to see if their kids were okay. You look for their kids? Yes. No good. Kids? First grader? Yep. Officer right there, I'll tell you. Just seeing someone know that their child could have been killed is something that you never want to see. There's nothing worse than not having a warm coat when it's freezing outside. That's why we're at Burlington. They have coats for play, work, the weekend, at prices you would not believe. Wow. Hey, cold weather, we're ready for you. <laughs> Thanks, Burlington. enough to make it the most wonderful time of the year, it doesn't go unnoticed. I got it. Yeah, it's just a little wet. Oh my God. We went out to the end of the parking lot. There were people running up and yelling their kid's name. And I can't imagine how you would see the destruction that occurred and believe that there were survivors. Amazingly enough, we were very, very fortunate and no one died in our building. Me and Benji got out and a bunch of his classmates. So we're good. We're looking for help right now. I'm trying to go to the front. Where the 7-Eleven's at? Me and Benji. Benji and I walked 40 city blocks. We were soaking wet. And there was a boy, uh, I say boy, he was an older older student, probably teenager. This teenager gave him his uh, Westmore hoodie. And that meant so much to me. There was a guy behind me, and he was kind of like, do you need help? And I said, no, I'll, I'll be fine. And he's like, I can't let you walk. I cannot sit here knowing that you're injured walking. I'll take you. And I've always wanted to say thank you to that guy, and I always wanted to say thank you to that young man that gave Benji his Westmore hoodie. They really helped me that day. I want to thank them for helping, for helping me that day. Everyone was needing help. People on one side of the city didn't realize that the other side was just as bad. And the hardest thing for me, and I know some of the other officers, is just seeing the hurt on people, knowing how much they've lost. Literally a quarter of our city was gone. So knowing what all the people were gonna have to go through to get their lives somewhat back to normal was probably the most difficult part. I came back from Iraq a couple years ago and the devastation, the debris, it took me back to Baghdad after a car bombing. We have shrapnel, deaths through legs, people not moving, casualties, uh, bad casualties. It just assaulted the senses. You smell gas and fire and just that earth scent as it's churned up. It was absolutely heartbreaking to see it so fresh, so raw, so immediate. And probably the most heartbreaking part was the sounds that still ring in my head to this day. People screaming for help from under debris. They are trying to remove the heavier debris so they can get to uh, someone at the bottom of that rubble. And then the silence when the emergency personnel can't get to them in time. We have kind of the basic stuff, the first aid kit, some gloves, which proved to be very handy that day, and just some heavy duty boots. People were running around looking for their loved ones, asking if they've seen their pets. 
We'll look for it if we see it. We're looking for it. It was sad to see animals affected by it because they had nowhere to go. They had nowhere to take shelter. You could see injured horses roaming free in the pasture. Some of those horses had to be put down just because they were so badly injured. Periodically, you could hear gunshots in the distance, which was very heartbreaking. No, no, that's, no. That, this, this right here, that's the, uh, that's the Plaza Towers Elementary School. Um, and th yep, we're right now, we're just north of 19th Street, south of 4th Street. I have been told that this is no longer a search and rescue operation. It's now a recovery mission. It is my understanding that there are up to two dozen children trapped at the bottom of that school right now. Patients that I see that complain about dry mouth, they feel like they have to drink a lot of water. Medications seem to be the number one cause for dry mouth. Dry mouth can cause increased cavities, bad breath, oral irritation. I like to recommend biotin. Biotin has a full array of products that replenishes the moisture in your mouth. Biotin definitely works. It makes patients so much happier. There were seven children who didn't make it out alive. And I understand they're going to start pulling these tiny victims out of the rubble here shortly. But There's one image that stands out in my mind. I saw the search and rescue personnel, and they're heaving tiny desks and chairs up in the air. And then you know beneath all of that, there are children who unfortunately didn't make it out alive. That's the end of where the first grade classrooms were. After the tornado, there were these levels of accepting how serious the situation was. I felt like I needed to process everything. And so I went back. There's a car in the middle of Mrs. Goodman's classroom. I saw X's spray painted. I knew that meant that the first responders had gone through everything, checking to see there had been loss of life. We were just so fortunate. That was the girls' bathroom, and that there is the boys' bathroom. This is where we were first lined up when I was texting parents and friends, and the lights had gone out, and then we went into the bathrooms. That's my door right there. As teachers, your classroom is like your second home, not only for yourself, but for your students. Oh, God. It's hard to see your classroom home just destroyed. A place that used to be full of kids' laughter and learning and activity and all that kind of fun stuff just ripped apart. But I was so fortunate. Did not lose my home like so many, my children's lives, and my own life. It's a reminder that our time is short. Appreciate your loved ones, appreciate the time that you have. One foot was wedged here. Noah was behind me, and he was grabbing my leg, and he had his foot against the door, and was back here. I was between the toilet and the wall, hanging on the, the toilets to make sure that I don't go up with the tornado. But I remember the walls felt like they were gonna come, they are pressing and pressing, and just trying to push the wall, push just like this. And I guess it was enough force to keep this off, and I pushed this in. Because his legs was holding up these walls, and, and, and his, his hands was, was, uh, was uh, like pulling up this wall, like, kind of like standing up in the air, just making sure that those walls didn't crash down on us. Yeah. It was hovering over yeah. almost all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like an umbrella. And it felt really scared. I pushed everything because it was all over. I just pushed everything and just started throwing stuff out, throwing stuff out, and you could see. Those walls almost crushed us, but my dad, he uh, 
Saved their lives. Them. He grabbed those walls and threw them. First boy out, second boy out. Benji, another boy out. If it wasn't for my dad, we would probably mm -hmm. not be here right now. Mm -hmm. We'd probably be under rubble. Mm -hmm. These are what saved our heads. Little heads. The dictionaries right there. That's what did it. We got out. Sam was a hero that day because if he wasn't there and that wall still kept on falling, it probably would have crushed all of us. He was a big hero. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the hero. They, those guys are the heroes. Those kids are the heroes. I just help. Anytime you have fatalities in your city, you feel somewhat responsible for that. You know, you don't want anyone to die in your city, especially kids. But just seeing that it had gone through several schools, just looking at the, the center of it, I didn't know how anyone could survive. My kids were OK. Going through something like that uh, really teaches you to be grateful for what you have, because I just saw my neighbors lose everything. Oklahomans are very tough and resilient. You care about your neighbor. It's you last and everybody else first. And that's the kind of love that you, you feel here in Oklahoma. When we first came into the damage path, there was an American flag hanging from a tree. I don't think somebody put it up there because we were there that soon mm -hmm. and it was hanging there. That image right there kind of stuck out of my head like, why is that flag hanging from the tree just like that? When so many houses were gone, we actually had minor damage at my house, but 100 yards away, there's nothing left. We didn't lose our house, but I knew that there was still a lot of tragedy. OK, I know my family is OK, but I know that there are many, many families out there that, that are not. Well, it ended up being 3 quarters of a mile south of my house, but at the same time, it just devastated so many people. And that's why you got to live life uh, one day at a time and protect our our loved ones and our fellow man. Oklahomans are very strong people. You just gotta help one another, you know? And that's exactly what we did. We helped each other. When Mother Nature is at her worst, human nature is at its very best. You look at more today, and this community is rebuilding, bigger and better and stronger. And it's because of the resilience of Oklahomans. It's the Oklahoma standard that we have grown accustomed to here. And to see that, that is the good that's come out of May 20th.